If you ever want to go under the radar as a Christian and just not make waves and just totally fit into the entire world, tough. Hi, I'm Bobby Angel with Ascension Presents, and today I want to talk to you about Christ's call to be salt and light in the world. Now, growing up, I was the nice guy. I was the guy that could get along with everyone, everyone's lunch table, bounce around, and not make waves, and I was a good Catholic kid, and for me, it was it was an internal thing. Like, I guess it just meant I was a nice guy, went to church, and that was kind of it. But are we called to do more than just fit in and be nice and get along with everyone? The answer is yes. Jesus challenges us in Matthew 5 that you are the salt of the earth and that we are meant to be light to the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. He says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's Matthew 5. We're living in such a time of purposelessness, of, of people lacking meaning, there's so much anxiety, there's so much just anger and frustration at one another and bickering and resentment and we're called to be above that, not just fit into it, not just kind of keep our faith in a private thing and not make waves. We're called to be light and that comes from our words, that comes from our actions and that means sometimes we have to stand out and that can be uncomfortable. That can be uncomfortable for us to rise above the bickering, to rise above all the, the nitpicking, especially online. St. John Chrysostom wrote, do not think that you have been called to unimportant tasks um, or an easy life. And so sometimes again, we think, man, I just want to go through the motions. I just want to fly under the radar. It's not who we're called to be as Christians. There, there is no small task. There is no small task when it comes to loving our family when it comes to loving our neighbor, when it comes to loving coworkers, and it is by our actions that we're going to draw people to Christ. First, for ourselves, that Jesus can transform our own hearts, that Jesus can start to make you know his ways where we're hardened, where we're feeling just kind of like meh, where we're going through the motions, where we don't have the the desire, the the, the drive, so that other people can know Jesus. He needs to set our own hearts on fire first. And then once that happens, we can't keep him to ourselves. Okay, so once you've been convicted by this love of God, that he, he loves me, he knows me, he wants me to be a part in the world, we have to respond to that. We have to go out. We can't just fly under the radar and not want to bother anyone or not impose our faith on the world. Pope John Paul II said that it's not that we impose our faith, but we propose it. We put it out there as a great romance. Hey, there is meaning in the world. Yes, yeah, sin has screwed up a lot, but God loves you. He has a plan for your life. Let's talk about that. Let's pray together. What's going on in your life? To take that role of listening to those around us is so important, and God wants us off the sidelines and in the game. Yes, there's a time and a place for evangelization. Yes, it doesn't mean we always come out guns blazing uh, with the name of Christ in every single sentence. But it should be like, in most sentences, it shouldn't be something that we're always hiding or downplaying. And I, th I think too, of sometimes that gets us in trouble, in good trouble. I think of St. Uh, Thomas More and John Fisher, who in the 16th century called out Henry VIII for his uh, warping of marriage, of trying to manipulate the sacrament of marriage and eventually even creating his own church. And they spoke out against it. They didn't just fly under the radar. St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher ended up losing their heads. One was a bishop. One was a married man. And I can't imagine as, again, as a, a, a man of faith who has a family and children that are relying on me, to speak the faith means that there could be consequences for my job, for my reputation, for my loved ones. But this is, we can't keep it to ourselves. You know, th this is the greatest good that God has given us to call us by name, to call us in our baptism, to be witnesses to the earth. And we rightfully reverence these and so many other saints throughout the centuries who were bold witnesses to Jesus, who didn't just keep it to themselves, who lived that faith even unto death. 
And to now see God face to face is the greatest treasure that all of us are going to be called to. Take comfort in the fact that it's also, it's not my gospel, it's not your gospel, it's the gospel of Christ. So it's his fault that we experience any kind of tribulation, any kind of slander, any kind of persecution. He says again in Matthew 11, Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. We stand in the long line of tradition of those that stuck their necks out for God, who said there's more to this life than, than just going through the motions, than just being comfortable, than just having nice material success and entertainment up the wazoo. We're meant for more than this. And that's a great joy. And that may ruffle feathers, and that may make people upset. The call to repent and believe in the good news. John the Baptist lost his head too over this in calling out the authority of his day. So no one makes that alive. And so how is God calling you? How is he calling me to be bold, to get out of our comfort zone, to maybe friends and family, to, to pray with them, to check in on them, to speak bold truth? It's uncomfortable. But that's the cross, and, and that's the way to eternal life. So let's pray for boldness and courage, okay? The world needs joy. The world needs hope. The world needs Jesus. And he's asking for you and I to get in the game. We're called to be salt and light to the world, not merely fit in. From all of us at Ascension Presents, God bless.